In this video, we're going to take a look at sheet metal styles inside of Autodesk Inventor's sheet metal environment. So here I have the sheet metal styles IPT from our working files directory. If I look at what's existing in my model tree, I can see I have a folded model and a flat pattern. Now, the styles that I create help control how that flat pattern gets developed. So what kind of deformation exists when I flatten this out into the flat plate that I begin with when I put this on a laser cutter or a water jet before I start bending things back up. So in order to start looking at this, we're going to look at our sheet metal defaults first. If I go up here to my setup panel and I click on sheet metal defaults, I will see a sheet metal rule, which is currently a seven gauge. I have a material set for this as well as an unfold method. If I'd like to examine this sheet metal rule a little bit more in depth, I can click on the pencil right next to the pull down. This will launch my styles and standards editor for Autodesk Inventor. Here it will list all my available sheet metal styles I have. So currently on my seven gauge metal, I can see that the sheet is currently using mild steel. It has a predefined thickness value. It has a predefined unfold method. It has settings for my miters, my rips, my seam gaps. It has a setting for my flat pattern bend angle when I report upon bends. If I go to the bend tab, it will mention what my defaults are here for my relief shapes, for my minimum remnants, for my bend transitions and my bend radiuses. On the corner tab, you can see it controls how a two bend intersection and a three bend intersection take place. This is essentially here to control my default settings for this type of sheet metal gauge value. Now, if I look at this unfold rule, you can see there's also a little pencil there. If I click on it, it will take me to the unfold rule method for this particular sheet metal style, which actually is also inside of this same dialog. It's just further down. So for my sheet metal unfold method, for this particular gauge, I have a predefined bend table in place for this one. Now you can define your unfolding and deformation values based on a linear K factor, which is basically a difference between your bend transition, your neutral axis line for where you have no stretch and no sag in your metal. You can create a custom bend table, which is pretty common if you want to take your metal out to your shop and actually put it into a fixture, bend it at different angles, and actually get unique values based off what angles you put into your metal. You can also go to the custom equation and you can create your own equation for how you bend the metal and what the deformation allowance is. So you have many different ways you can control how your sheet metal will unfold. Which one is right for you depends on what your manufacturing process is. If you're only responsible for creating a folded model and you send this out to be contracted somewhere else, you're not going to have a fixture in place that you can take a bend table on. You might not also know what their custom bend equation is for how they flatten out their metal. So you might just care about producing a linear K factor. And most of these values can be grabbed from a machinist handbook or you can specify just a generic value for this. So whatever method is best for you based on your manufacturing process or based on how you get parts created and get sent to your company, you're going to choose which unfold method makes sense for you. You're also going to make sure that you actually produce something, test it to make sure it is flattening out the way that your press brake will fold something from a flat style to make sure you're getting an accurate result off of this. There's a lot of playing around with these values when you're first setting up Inventor's sheet metal environment that you have to understand. Now, once you have your unfold method set up, once you have your sheet metal rules in place, you can go ahead and add these to a template, like you can with any other inventor style that you can save to the style library. So you have to make sure that you have a read-write library, which mine currently is, and I could then save that back to my style library, so that anyone who opens up a new sheet metal file, or even an existing sheet metal file, will have the correct rules in place for how things flatten out for how you actually get a valid result out of your deformations. I'm going to go ahead and close this dialog box. 
and you'll also be able to see that I can grab these sheet metal rules from my pull down list. I can see all my different values in here. If I would like to override my thickness value from my rule, I have the ability to do that. So for instance, if I were to choose something like this default millimeter style here, my thickness from rule is 0.5. Now, the thickness of this metal is not actually 0.5. I don't want it to be 0.5, we'll say, and for some reason I could override the rule. Normally you do this on things where you would like to make a specialty rule inside the file you're currently in based on a new thickness value you want to create and not have that being saved back to your library. Or maybe this is a vendor file you downloaded, it came in as a neutral format, you know, it doesn't have any feature tree to it, doesn't have any faces or sheet metal features, and you need to flatten it you might have to adjust your thickness from rule to be what the imported thickness value is. So you can just uncheck this box and you can change it to anything you want. And then your thickness value for your features for when it flattens out will be adjusted. For now, I'm going to stick with my thickness from rule. And in fact, I'm going to stick with my seven gauge here. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here to the edging of this metal. And I want to show you what happens when you do change the rule. Either by using the override for your sheet metal thickness or by choosing a new rule from your list. So here I'm going to choose the 12 gauge stainless. You can see my material adjusted to stainless steel. My unfold rule also changed. My thickness value is currently being read as 0.105 instead of 0.179. As I apply this, it will change the thickness of my metal and adjust my bend extents and my bend radiuses accordingly. So I'm going to close out of this dialog box and I'm going to access the flat pattern for this environment. So I'll double click on flat pattern over here in the tree. I can see I have a valid flat pattern definition. If I right click on it, I'm going to look at our extents of this flat metal. Here I can see it's 7.576 inches by 12 inches in the X direction mostly because I didn't add any flanges to the X. I only added deformation flanges to the Y. I have a nice controllable X direction right now. So I'm gonna close this and go back over to my folded state. I'll double click on the folded model here, change my sheet metal defaults back to my seven gauge. And here I'll do the mild steel. I'll go back to my flat pattern and I'll do the flat pattern extents again. Now you can see my Y value is different based on this having a different deformation value for how it unfolds. Maybe it's due to the thickness of the material, maybe it's due to the fixture that I had to put my stainless material in compared to my mild steel into. And I can see my Y value is 7.296 because I have deformation in the flanges. However, my X direction, because nothing was changed to it, remains to 12 inches. So here I'm going to go back to my folded model. And just to recap the video here, we have essentially identified how the sheet metal environment works with these styles. It's important that you test your styles to make sure that your sheet metal styles reflect the actual manufacturing processes that you're going through. 